Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, hopefully, we're getting the heads machined. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that post notification bell to stay up to date with this rebuild. That being said, let's get into it. All right, boys, it's still Sunday, so um, kick it off from last episode. Um, I've done some ordering of parts. Um, place where I get my parts from doesn't have four of these seals, only two. But I'll have to wait for the order to be fulfilled. So like last time, we didn't get all the, the timing covers, even though I said one was available, but I did get a refund for it. So, but um, yeah, I'll wait for that to happen and then we'll see if we need to go down to our local Subaru and uh, just pick up a couple of oil seals. We've got the part numbers, so shouldn't... <sighs> I forgot to order these ones. <laughs> oh well. I'll get the part number and get it from the local Subaru dealership. Um, that'll be pretty far down the track, putting the engine back together anyways. Um, been thinking about relocating the water reservoir. Um, IAG do a pretty good looking one that sits on the, on the, um, up here. So, I don't know. I'll put up a picture of it. What do you guys think? I might get rid of that crossover pipe that comes up and all the way over and up. And I'll just use some hose that I've got over here. So we've got plenty spare. Yeah. So tomorrow I'll give the guy a ring that does the heads at work. And uh, see if he's still doing them in lockdown. If not, um, I don't know, but I'll let you know. So, I still got to order some main bearings and some big end bearings for the rods. Um, so I'll measure them up, and they should be just standard size. Hello, I'm back. Um, I have no idea what I'm up to. Um, was it Monday? I actually forgot to call a guy about machining the heads, so I'll do that tomorrow. I'm working Wednesday, Thursday this week, so I'll get the the engine and the heads in on Wednesday and put them in the in the dishwasher and um, get them all cleaned up. Really good. Um, don't know if I mentioned that I'm getting the STI crank. I ordered that with the seals and everything. I think there's a couple of seals I still need to get because they are low of where I bought everything else from. So hopefully that delivery will be here next week. Um, also got some ACL race bearings, main bearings and big end bearings. Conrad bearings coming so um, they should be here by the end of the month um, so 10 days um, yeah so it looks like probably into October that the engine will be going back together but that's okay got a bit of work to do in the engine bay um, I have been collecting some parts, but I'm not telling you what they are in the car. Um, so yeah, I've got plenty of plenty of things to do. Um, hopefully soon. Actually, I'll tell you one thing I did get. I got a 
T3 to 2.5 inch V-band, 90 degree bend to come off the GT35. So hopefully we can have a pretty neat setup for the compound system. Um, I think that'll be, hopefully it'll work out. But yeah. Can't really do much at the moment. Um, except probably move the heads over to here and start cleaning up the engine bay. Oh, engine mounts. I keep forgetting about engine mounts. Need to order some of them. Cool. So I've got a bit of work to do. I've got all this AM line I can get out. I can get the scavenger pump out. I've got all this vacuum line here that I can pull through because we won't have anything down here anymore. Um, so, actually maybe I can put an oil cooler on this side. That might work. I've got the trans cooler on that side. The oil cooler here. Also, I was going to shave down some of the mounts on the intake as well. Could do that too. It's quite a bit to do. Um, maybe I'll pop out tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get my little one to sleep during the day tomorrow and I can come out and do some things. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Alright, I'm back. It's uh, Tuesday. Um, I just called my connection for decking the heads and just had a message due to workload. It's not taking on any more jobs. So, uh, damn. I have to find somebody else locally. Um, I think one of the mechanics at work said some guy in Lillardale, which isn't too far away from me. So, I'll, um, I'll have a chat to the guy at work and see so what I might do is I'll take the heads and the block in to work tomorrow and put it through the washer and then at least we can start you know putting the block back together once we get the bearings and the crank I'm pretty excited about the crank so it's a strengthened crank it's not that one, but now that I've got that out, I've still got my rods and pistons from the GT, so um, potentially we can make another motor. What would be pretty cool is if I just got another NA block and did the the resin and um, and ran that and see how that went. Um, but that does just have stock rods and pistons so that would be the issue um so i'm thinking with the upgraded crank rods and pistons the next thing that would probably go is the gearbox i don't think the engine would go unless we had a big failure but um yeah so i'll I'll load up the, the block and the heads into the car and we'll take that. So I'll actually shoot the the foreman a message and get him to turn on the, the washer before he goes. So when I go there in the morning, because I'm the only one there on Wednesday, so I'll turn like all the compressor and everything on. Um, I'll just chuck him in the, the washer and get him out at the end of the day. We're all good. I'll come back and show you guys. So that'll be next episode, you'll probably see that. <coughs> but for right now, um, we'll get the heads over here and we'll start pulling all the AN lines out for the scavenger system and we'll, we'll start cleaning up the, the engine bay. I mean, to start doing some other work in there while we're waiting to find out where I can get these machined. Right, so I'm playing in the engine bay right now. Um, just looking at all the vacuum lines, it's so much length when I had everything down here. I had two wastegates down here and I had the, the three port up here, so there's so much there. Um, that's going to be getting a lot shorter. 
um, because everything will be up here now. And I'm starting to think to put 50 mil first to control the TDO5. Um, so once that does open, we're going to get a lot more flow to the GT35 and use it 38, 38 millimeter. Um, to control the GT35 and actually have the three put on the GT35. Um, so we are creating more boost in the GT35, which is a lot more airflow. Because that's what we want, more airflow, more air, more fuel, faster the car. So um, yeah, I think we wanna start hearing that GT35 spool up a bit more. And um, yeah. I think that might be the way to go. So I just got to figure out <coughs> how I'm going to do the the wastegates um, because the right-hand drive car we have a lot of stuff down here. So um, yeah, I've got a bit of work to do. Um, I'll probably end up doing the up pipe and everything on the engine stand when it's all back together, so I can get it nice and tied up against the, the engine because we are obviously using the stock location so we want to miss all the, the knuckle and everything here um, I need to work out something with the power steering here I need to clean up all that we still need to do the boots for the power steering uh, so that actually is under the car yeah I need to clean up some wiring we need to get some of that material um, tape instead of this plastic tape and clean everything up. Yeah, like this vacuum, the, the blower valve. What I really need is a welder to do aluminium so we can do some proper um, charge pipes. That'd be the way to go. Alright boys, all of the scavenger lines are out. So, what am I going to do with the catch can now? I was thinking maybe of running coolant through the middle section or through the old scavenger just to get heat into it so we don't have that build up because a lot of the um, oil air separators, the air oil separators, have coolant running through the bottom of it to keep it um, nice and warm so they don't get that build up, that white milkshake yucky looking stuff so anything that goes back or comes out it's actually pretty clean instead of gross. What do you guys think? Should I run coolant through it? Could I make that my reservoir? Do you think it sits too low? Alright, got my timer relay off. And out of the engine bay. That was a learning experience. A $100 relay that I'm not using now. Alright, so. Here's the trigger wire for the scavenger. Well, um, I'll have to pull that through. There's a few other things that I'm going to be pulling through that I no longer use, like the, the oil tamp gauge. Do not use that. So that can be unclipped. Get out. Um, yeah, so they can be pushed back through. Um, I'm probably just going to have to take this heat um, sheath off. Because I'll probably have to work out some more that I'm getting rid of. What we got here? I've got oil pressure. I'm using that. I've extended that one. 
Uh, I'll just make sure everything's still good in there in the join. Um, there is water temp that one has popped off. Um, I won't be using that one, so we can get rid of that. Get rid of the, the audio cable that I put through. I'm going to have my old GoPro Hero 3. I did a couple of audios in there, engine bay. So I'll get rid of that, that'll clean up. Actually, comes through and comes through here. I used to just plug it in. Got some boxes and boxes and boxes, isn't it? So, yeah. I really want to clean up everything. It's my exhaust valve cut out. Mm, I'll probably change that blue one to a black one. And uh, I've got to sort out the, the wiring over here too. From it's the starter old audio cable. Um, so I really should have an earth that size too. Um, yeah, so I need to get some new plugs, I reckon. It's broken. I broke one of my injector um, plugs quite a while ago, and it's just been resting on there, it's not even clipped on. So, uh, yeah, one day. One day we're going to do an auto to manual swap. I think this grommet is used for the clutch, so I might have to reroute that somewhere. I guess got rid of the washer bottle to make room. Looks so much better without it there. Um, so yeah, I'll probably make a nice little bracket thing for some say fueling stuff I want big power I don't think uh, this little filter is gonna be enough so we'll, uh, I don't use that bracket down there so we'll get that all off figure out what size actual um, fuel line is there and uh, we'll go from there also, I can clean up all this now, so um, I do have a washer bottle that goes in the boot, came out of a Liberty, um, so I might do that, I'll just put some like check valves in it, so there's always water up the front for it, um, but yeah. Alright guys, so I got rid of the earth strap that goes to the starter. That should be the same size as the power. The reason why my power is that big is because we have the battery in the back. Just to get as much current as possible to the starter. So uh, we'll be upgrading the earth to the same size. Um, so I've just put that in the back with the starter. So remember what it is. Obviously, uh... I forget to put it on it engine won't crank so just remind me if it doesn't crank have you put the earth on and I'll go you idiot anyway clean it up here um, so with the the washers we have the line that goes up there to the front we have the line that goes into the garden out to the back so what I could potentially do is just join these two all right and then when I get to the back, we can tee into the other one and it'll be short to the back and long to the front, and if that makes sense. Or well, what I could do is put a one-way valve up here and that'll um, keep water on that side of it. So there'll be water straight away. We'll put a couple in there, or one at the very back. So once it gets past that, it can't come back. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that might be it. Um, I've got to sort out some some fueling and um, some locations for some particular parts. 
so that's why the that has gone so we'll probably do a bit of a clean up in here next and start sorting through some wiring and some fueling while we uh wait to get the heads decked and the parts to come in um i got a message from one of my part suppliers saying that they haven't got the piece in yet so it'll be a little while so we are definitely looking at into october to uh have this back in and hopefully running and once it's running it's got a bass tune we can book it in for a dyno tune finally Do you want to get that 400 horsepower or 300 kilowatts? That'd be pretty mint. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be a test mule to see how much an NA block can handle with upgraded internals. Um, probably the most important thing would be um, there's an oil pump. So I might look at that, I might look at an 11 mil, I believe mine's a 10, and it's been through hell, so uh, yeah we might might get another oil pump to put on. So guys, if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next episode, bye.